الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احب ان في الله continue on in our study of hadith our hadith course uh, we reach the fifth hadith and this hadith gives us the description of hypocrisy and this is something that we want to be aware of these are traits and attributes in which we must avoid as believers bi idnillah ta'ala an abi hurairata radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qaal ayatul munafiq thalath idha haddatha kadha وَإِذَا وَعَدَ أَخْلَفْ وَإِذَا أُتِمَّ أُتِمَّنَا أُتُمِّنَا خَانٌ رواه البخاري. This is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. The hadith of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه who said that uh, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم reported or reported on the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said the signs of the hypocrite are three. When he speaks, he lies. When he promises, he breaks his promise. And if he is trusted, he breaks his trust or he breaks the trust. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informs us that a hypocrite may be known by three signs. Whenever he speaks, he lies. Whenever he promises to do something, he does not fulfill his promise. And whenever he is trusted, for example, with the safekeeping of some value, something valuable or money, he does not return it. This does not mean that a person who possesses one or two of these traits is branded a hypocrite. But he should be uh, be aware of these attributes and beware them. For it means that there is something lacking in his iman, in his or her faith. So, very important that we have to be cautious about calling people hypocrites. Even if we see these traits within them. Sometimes we see that a person maybe has all of these traits, but still we have to be careful not to say he's a munafik. No, we don't say that. But rather, these traits are mentioned in this hadith as a stern warning for us. Ayatul Munafiq Thalaf. That the signs of a hypocrite are three. So these are the signs. These are the characteristics of a hypocrite. And we have to avoid them as believers. The first one is be wearing, uh, being cautious about lying. That we shouldn't lie. And that the person who lies, they have a one of the signs of hypocrisy. Also, we have to be careful about breaking our promises. So it's better not to make promises, to do our best to avoid making a promise if we can, or when we do, we should strive our utmost to fulfill that promise. If we promise, hey, I'm going to take you here, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this for you, then we should strive our utmost to fulfill that promise so as not to uh, have the sign of a hypocrite. Likewise, uh, when we are trusted with something, we should avoid taking care of that trust. If someone loans, uh, gives us money uh, to, to guard for them or some, some property of theirs, then we should do our best to safeguard that property and not break that trust. We should also keep secrets. That's part of a trust too. That if someone entrusts you with a secret, you should not spread that secret. Oh, so-and-so, this is a very important secret. Please don't tell somebody. Please don't tell anyone. Then you go and you broadcast it on YouTube. You put it on Facebook. You put it on Twitter. You put it on Instagram. Whatever. This is a violation of that trust. And this is a sign of the hypocrite, hypocrites. So we want to avoid that. Some of the benefits from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, one of the benefits is that the signs of a hypocrite are three 
or four. And the reason that he mentioned three or four because there's another hadith which describes four. Uh, another benefit derived from this hadith is it shows us the sin of lying, that lying is one of the major sins. So we have to be careful. And the one who lies, that this person, if they continue to lie, then they are written with Allah as a liar. And that's another hadith of the Prophet where the Prophet mentioned that the person who lies so much that they will then be written with Allah, written uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a liar, meaning that khalas, that they are a liar khalas, that they have a major, this major sin is attributable to this person. So this is something very dangerous to, uh, uh, to fall into this great sin. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith illustrates for us the sin of breaking promises, that we have to avoid uh, breaking our promises, doing our best to fulfill those promises. Also, this hadith shows us the sin of betraying a trust, that we should also try to fulfill our trusts. You know, when we're trusted with something, whether it be wealth, whether it be a secret, whatever it is, that we should try to fulfill those trusts and not betray the trust. The last benefit of this hadith is it shows us the sin of evil and insulting speech. That when we are, we have sinful speech, that this is something evil and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates it. In another hadith, uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْكُلُ فِي مِزَانَ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِذُ الْفَهِشَ الْبَدِيءِ the Prophet ﷺ said, there isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale, the scales of a believer than good manners. And verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So that's why we have to be careful not to swear, not to curse. And you see the characteristics, and the more, the stronger that your iman becomes, that when you're around people who have wicked speech, or you watch people, maybe you see on the YouTube or what have you, people who have wicked speech, they, every other word they say is something evil. It's cursing, it's lying. They lie and tell jokes about people. They curse uh, people. All they do is cuss, cuss, cuss. You'll see that that makes you, it feels weird to you. You, you feel strange because you, don't, you, you are a person of Iman. And when you see this kind of sickness or the person who has these traits, that either this will rub off on you in a negative way or it will turn you off, meaning you, you won't like that because it, it just it seems something um, uh, distasteful for you, something you just don't like, and it makes you feel bad. Whenever I hear a person that is cursing all the time, it, it makes me feel a little, uh, you know, I don't feel comfortable around that. You know what I mean? Because I don't swear. I don't curse. So likewise, you don't have that in your lives. You have pe people cussing and all this stuff and swearing and always speaking bad about people. So it's a big deal to you when you get around people who don't have those values and they swear and they curse and they act wicked. You'll feel, you'll feel strange and you'll feel out of place and you'll feel uncomfortable. So this is a sign of Iman that you feel uncomfortable around that and the one who feels comfortable around those the, that kind of foulness, this is a sign of disbelief or weakness in Iman, that they're moving in the wrong direction. And likewise, this is a sign of hypocrisy. So this is another sign of hypocrisy. Because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in another hadith, he said, Ayatul Munafiq uh, Arba, or he said there are four. In another hadith, so this one said three. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said four. And he said that when he disputes, he uh, he's like swears and goes beyond the bounds. So this is a dangerous trait, and, I, and, and we have to check ourselves. And I want to mention this, that sometimes we find, even from our brothers and sisters, and this is a negative trait, and that we have to be careful of ourselves. That sometimes when they get in arguments, you see that they're the kind of person that they go beyond the bounds. So it starts out something small, but they're saying the worst things. For example, sometimes you find taxi drivers. 
and they are they get cut off and you hear them curse the people's ma mother or they'll call them a dog Kelb, or call them this or curse their mother or say this he's going way beyond the bounds maybe the person was wrong but you don't have to go to that extreme to jawz al had that this person has gone beyond the bounds yeah you might say ah that was horrible what he did or you know whatever but to go beyond the bounds, you curse his mother. You hope that he dies. You hope that he gets in a car wreck. This is, you hope he goes to Jeh Jehannam. No, that's going too, too far. So one of the signs of a hypocrite is that when they get in a debate or when they get in an argument with someone, someone disagrees with them, they go beyond the bounds. Likewise, you'll find people from Ahla Bida, what they do is that when they get in an argument with someone, They'll make tech fear to them. They'll say, oh, well, you're just a kafir anyway. Oh, you're, you're a Wahhabi. Oh, you say that Allah is above his throne. You made him like the creation. You're a kafir. You and your kafir sheikhs. This is what they say. So it shows that they don't know how to have edit. They don't have any manners on how to even argue because their argument is so weak. And their intellect is so weak. Their, 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 the way they think is so weak. So all they can do is curse. All they can do is go beyond the bounds because they're so weak. So that's a sign of weakness and it's a sign of hypocrisy. And last point I want to mention is that we have to remember that everyone who does an act of hypocrisy is not a hypocrite, even if they have this trait. So that's why we don't say he's a hypocrite. Likewise, as Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, everyone who kulluman uh, Everyone who falls into disbelief, an action of disbelief, is not a disbeliever. So sometimes a Muslim can say an act of kufr, say a statement of kufr by accident. Either he said it by because he's ignorant, either he said it because he or she uh, was just getting carried away in argumentation and it was a slip of the tongue, they did it by mistake, or they could have did it because they were forced to, their life was threatened or whatever the case may be so those are some of the things that the ulama mentioned or there be jahil that they're excused because they're ignorant or or there be be uh because they uh you know be khapa you know they made a mistake it was a legitimate mistake or a mistake on his tongue he mispronounced something and he said a statement of kufr so we have to realize and we can benefit from this hadith that Everyone who falls into an act of hypocrisy is not a hypocrite. Everyone who does an act of kufr is not a kafir. So we have to be careful when we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Anything I said was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.